Oh, great. All right, well, thank you. For, I'm glad, I, I hope you got something out of that. We're going to have one more exercise in a little bit, but I wanted to uh, just throw a just throw a little bit of a philosophical. It's the whole idea of the about positive and negative poles in the Michael teaching equating automatically to love and fear. And for a long time, I've I've sat with them and I've uh, been with them, and I thought, you know, it's it's often posed as black and white, and I don't, and, and it just has never sat with me as black and white. So I asked a lot, I, I, I changed words here and there, and eventually I've kind of got it distilled to where, you know, when you're talking about readings, remember, life isn't perfect. For every, you know, for everything that maybe looks like it's full steam ahead, there may be something that uh, either is putting the brake on or uh, says slow down a little bit because you're going to hit a sandbar or whatever the case is. So there's both. And, and in readings, as we just had the practice of doing, when I was walking you through, you know, guys having you observe all the different layouts, you notice that most of them, in fact, had some combination of both. But in each, you could see a predominance of one over another. So when we're looking at illuminated or positive poles, um, the reason I even you know, was encouraged to change it to the illuminated poles is because they said, you know, to kind of take a little bit of this, the, the new age spin out of, uh, you know, kind of cotton candy and Pollyanna, is they said, you know, love isn't necessarily, you know, virtuous in some kind of noble chivalrous way, nor does it win the day every time. Mm -mm. But in fact, it's true. In other words, if you come to your truth, even if it's a truth that really doesn't look very nice to you. You know, like, you know, maybe you have to do something that's, that you know is going to cause someone pain, not because you're doing it, but because their relationship to, the, to you know, being told the truth is, it, it, it breaks down all their pretenses. And that's, you know, that's something, and, and maybe you don't want to do that, but you know it's what has to be done. It's just true. That's all. And notice the second phrase there is that when we're in a love motivation, we're in an authentic place, what Michael might call true personality. And it, it really has a sense of we've contemplated it and we're aware of so at least one part of the, of the agenda, honestly. We may not know the essence's point for it, because, of course, essence has plopped us in bodies to go through all this stuff, right? Sometimes first for the first time, sometimes for karma... Uh, um, Restitution, sometimes for karma creation, so we don't always know, but we do. We do know. Okay, this is what I got to do. And so, whenever you see an illuminated pole, the love factor in it, I'm suggesting, and that this is, you know, again, what they gave me is realize that sometimes love is tough. It's not just that it makes us feel good, but what love can make us feel is it can galvanize that sense inside of where we rec recognize it. Especially, let's face it, if you're egotistical like me and have all, my, all the chief features running, you know, sometimes facing a truth can really not feel good, and yet it can still be the truth. And it can be the most loving thing. So, on the other hand, it isn't really true unless it makes you laugh, but you don't really understand it till it makes you cry. Oh, God, you're so freaking good. Oh, my God. Oh, can I clone you and just bring you on the road? I'll just, Sounds tiring. I'll just say, oh. <laughs> Too frenetic. Too frenetic. <laughs> we'll put you in an AI. Hi, this is the Sue AI. Hi, I come up with slick little aphorisms at a point in time. Yeah, okay. All right, so the thing that they told me is, is that the main thing that we get into real polarity about all too often is when we, when we even often say the word fear, it's like, <gasps> what do we do? We go into fearing fear. And fear is just a state. Now, it may not feel necessarily good. A lot of our compensations to fear certainly feel good. You know, if you're an ice creamaholic like me, by God, it feels great calming that fear, you know, with Rocky Road. Okay? <laughs> it can feel great, and yet it's my addiction. So, 
the prescription is, is when you're aware of fear, aware what you're doing with it. Are you going into fear with fear? Because if you can stand back and say, oh, this is fear, I'm acknowledging its presence, it's there. It doesn't mean that you like it. Doesn't mean that you know you pretend it away or just do affirmations to get rid of it because that's resistance too. It's rather ask it if you're present right now, what is it, what is that positive intent that may be underneath you that's trying to help me? Yeah, trying to keep you safe. It's trying to keep me safe. What might it be? And asking that question can reveal a lot. Including where you feel unsafe. Including where you feel unsafe. Can you put an example? For example, if I'm afraid to play piano in front of people, what would be? So, all right, just let me ask you. So you're afraid to play piano. What's the, worst, what's the worst thing that could happen? They, they leave. That they leave. Okay. Leave so if, if, if your fear of playing the piano had a positive intention that was trying to keep you safe, what would it be keeping you safe from? How about feeling embarrassment when they left? Feeling cut off socially. All right. Let's try a simpler. Let's try a simpler one. Okay. Um, um, if I said to you, uh, "Let's go out drinking," and um, after about seven shots of tequila, you were feeling no pain. And we were all, you know, saying Esperanza, eight, 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 eight. And some part of your brain that was still swimming, or not swimming, said, oh, no, no, don't do it. What might it be its positive intent for you to say, no, don't do it? How about its positive intent is to keep you from passing out, to keep you from ending up over the toilet throwing up your brains? Is this making any sense? I'm trying to be very visceral because remember, a positive intention, even behind a fear, could be it's trying to prevent you from getting hurt somehow. It's trying to prevent you from being in a situation where it perceives that you would be in danger, that you would be hurt. And if you ask the question, of, you know, what do you, or another way of saying it is, what are you trying to protect me from? What is fear trying to alert you to that it wants to protect you from? Okay, so what is, how about Donald Trump? In what, but what, what, what about know, Donald Trump? Well, I mean, I think all of us are living in fear of what he's going to do. Okay, so on a worldly, on a worldly level, right. then you could say, is, what was your fear trying to alert you to? You know, do I have, can I run to another planet? Where can I go to escape whatever crap he's going to Okay, now here? those are what I call strategies to try and deal with the fear. Right. But I'm asking you to go a little deeper and say, fear, what's the message that you really want me to know is beneath you? In other words, what are you trying to prevent yourself from? And it sounds like what you're trying to be prevented from is somebody coming to get you. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, under the camp. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, all hail Caesar, right? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Caesar the with the Cheetos haircut. Yeah. yeah so right. yeah, how do we how do we deal with that? How <laughs> do I deal with that? And uh, you got the visual. <laughs> yeah. We do. He has a Cheeto head. He does have a Cheetos head, and that's about all that's in there is for gray matter as well. But anyway, <laughs> the thing about it is, is by asking the positive intent. It can at least, <coughs> one part of your system, your fear can get gotten on its good intention of trying to protect you. Okay. And, and, and believe it or not, when that happens, did you notice your reaction when I said that? Yeah, he's going to come and get me. Yeah. Exactly. Right. That's really right. the base level fear around Donald Trump. We're all right. of us. We're, we're seeing what looks like, you know, Hitler in order. No personally targeted yeah. citizens. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. He does it with tweets. He, exactly. He now does. he has a surveillance system. He can come and look at your stuff and do stuff to you personally if you personally piss him off. That's right. what he's right. demonstrated. Exactly. So it's not to say, and so notice that the fear has a valid concern. All right. Now, its strategy to protect you against it may be realistic or it may be unrealistic. 
like maybe you have the means, Delilah, to go to Canada. Maybe you have the means to move to, I don't know, whatever country you right. wanted to move yeah. to. You know, but other people might not have that strategy, even right. though they mouth that, those words, right? Mm -hmm. When confronting a fear for its positive intent, at least you can also give it back some of its honor instead of running from it. How many of you have ever really resisted something? <laughs> really resisted something, right? Okay, so you really resist something. What do you notice about how much energy you're putting out to resist it? A lot. A lot. So what if you drop the resistance? Acknowledge the fear. It doesn't mean you accept it. It doesn't mean you wallow in it. It doesn't mean anything like that. You just say, okay, what are you trying to tell me? And what the, the message might be is, I don't want you to get hurt. And, the, and whatever part of you, ego, essence, personality, um, your guides, thank you. And yes, it is scary. You might find that that inner reality check at least shifts your relationship a little bit so that you can take back some of your power. Because have you also noticed that when you're in resistance to something like this, what's really controlling the directions of your actions? The fear. Mm. The thing that you're resisting. Are you saying not to be in resistance to Trump? <laughs> <laughs> Am I reading you correctly? <laughs> because I'm afraid too. Uh, I, and, and what I'm suggesting is, and what I'm suggesting is, with with fear, is don't be in resistance to the fear, but stay observant and, and stay alert. conscious and alert. Because if you're not in resistance to fear. Right. You can recapture your attention and alertness and pay the frick attention. See, because the bottom line is, sometimes fight, flight, or freeze, that are the mechanisms of fear, save your life. How about life? Quite literally. <laughs> if, if, if it's genuine, if you can honestly, if you can do, but if you're using laughter as a strategy to avoid fear, then I would suggest that it's still... Resistance. You're still resistance yeah. to it. And that's an externalized pretension, and that's a key phrase there. Pretension. Yeah. You're pretending. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. You're pretending that it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So the reason I bring this up is, okay, first of all, in the sixth page of your handout and in the booklet, I offer you some expanded versions of what the um, uh, illuminated poles and shadow poles might be. So the energy behind them, for instance, you notice what I've got there, Curi indicating curiosity, openness, and forward moving in an evolutionary sense. But when the shadow poles are there, it might say that the conditions that are present are suggesting be vigilant. You know, you may even need to go on defense. Or maybe you're feeling like you're in survival in whatever way that is true for you. Whether it's financial survival, sometimes it's, who knows, it's physical survival. Literally, yeah. You know, I, I know you probably had clients, as have I, um, uh, sadly mostly women, who have felt threatened by their spouses. Oh, and yeah. so it's a physical survival in those kind of situations. Absolutely. But anyway, these are, uh, try these. When you look at positive and negative poles, mm -hmm. try these other options and see what kind of light they shed on these things for you. See if they expand your awareness to say, hmm. Because maybe sometimes doing the conventional route is exactly what you need to do, whatever the particular the, the particular situation is. You know, maybe it's you have to go on a diet and you just have to cut out uh, sugar and dairy. Con you know, conventional means of doing a diet and no kind of well. If I just sit there and visualize my carbs away, you know, or something like that, <laughs> it's not you, know, work. you know, it, it just ain't gonna work. It's unconventional, but it isn't gonna work. So. So anyway, I just bring these up to you. Also social survival. Like what you were talking about made me think social survival, like rejection from the primary group. You know, that's very hardwired for our physical body. Yes. We're primates. Yep. We're primates. And, and, as primates, so, and we're incredibly social creatures. So, so if you're rejected by the group, that literally is like survival to a primate. So that could be hitting, you know, your fear of... of like maybe messing up and getting embarrassed. Well, maybe then your friends are going to snigger at you and they're not going to include you in things. You know, that's that, that's the kind of a fear of social survival, maybe. Mm -hmm. See? What are you looking for? But if you just went... From another lifetime? 
No, it could be from this one. You know, a lot of people are nervous when they're doing something in front of a group that they might fail. I mean, I think that's pretty common. But you can just say, I'll do it, and if I mess up, I, I know my friends yeah, love me yeah. anyway. Yeah, there's, there's, that would be that. You know, Susanna, <laughs> you know, um, at, at some point at the end of this, I, you know, if, if, if you care to, you know, take five or ten minutes and just explain chaos nodes. Um, oh. You know, it, if, you know through, uh, or, or just, you know, let me just say it in a, in a right. sentence. What we're experiencing right now from most of my colleagues and my own channeling is we have hit an evolutionary wild card where all the probabilities about the future have been virtually, in other words, it's a nexus that wiped everything clean. So what happens next, what happens next <coughs> is completely unwritten, but what's, what scares most of us is that we know that human behavior um, as a trend <coughs> tends to keep following a trend. And this guy's trend has always yeah. been, yeah. you know, pretty much uh, in the hostile, um, in the underhanded, uh, the mean, and, uh, and overbearing. So, you know, when we look at that on a national scale, no wonder it scares us. And, you know, you could say that he represents a lot of the shadow sides of American culture. Exactly. Narcissism, arrogance, money isn't more important than anything else. We're going to favor our group over anybody else. That's telling us we have to look at those things. Yeah, that shadow side put him in office, didn't it? It absolutely did, but what also, he is a destroyer. Okay. You can't create new things until the old is cleared away. He is going to dismantle certain things. And that is scary if in terms of wanting to keep things familiar. But if we really came here to transform the world, there's going to be rubble. But that doesn't mean we don't fear the process, <laughs> you know? <laughs> There'll be Flintstone, too. Yeah. <laughs> and so. people get hurt, yeah. you know, at times like this. So this is, the, this is the last exercise, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy this one. It's a very simple one. The thing that, about uh, the cards in the end that uh, almost literally when I finished them, um, uh, one day I, I was looking at my Ganesha statue. <laughs> and that's why, you know, I loved that dog last night. We had a little right. dog here by the name of Ganesha, uh, who was a Bichon. And he, I mean, what a character. Uh, you know, and also no snout. Uh, at least not, not elephant snout. Not noticeable. But a little cute, you know, black, you know, wet snout. Anyway, is, um, so I got the idea, oh, I want to pose this question to Ganesha. And uh, Mikey said, oh, that's right, you can do that. You can go ahead and ask any avatar, angel, guide, uh, essence of a loved one, any person or being you want, the card is just a vehicle for them to speak with. What would Jesus do now? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It would probably be love, guys. Love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or as he goes by his current name, is Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> My gardener, he walks on my pool, man. Um, so this last, this last bit, these are a, a bunch of options that I'd like you to just uh, know that's available to you. That can you can ask the card. So you can ask you uh, the essence of an individual. So say somebody you love and you have some real concern about them. Just say, all right, you know, uh, Sarah's essence. You know, tell me what's going on for you right now, or tell me, you know, why it is that when we have this circumstance, and then I'll flip a card. Asking her essence to give me input so that the energy is tying into her. Susanna was describing this uh, energy earlier when she was talking about heart link. Okay? You're creating a heart link to whoever um, uh, essentially you want data from. Okay? But here's some of the, the varieties. Okay? Um, uh, you could do it from a sub-personality. This one was really fun. I will. Uh, some personalities are part, uh, and several of us in the teaching use them. Uh, they're aspects of yourself. That are that come out at various times. Like probably the most familiar one, of course, is we all talk about our rebel inside, um, or our li our inner child. They're right? subroutines. You know, they're subroutines, right? For you some of them are the janitor. They keep things going autonomously in the personality, just like you have autonomic <laughs> systems in the body. There you go. So you could ask you could ask a sub about its input, or you could call up and say, "All right, for me, bear energy." As far as animal uh, animal um, totems is really important to me, so I'll I'll ask my triumvirate of bears because I have a, a threefold team of that. Oh wow! Um, yeah, the polar, grizzly, and black. Nice. Yeah. 
So, um, no say, panda? Pardon me? No you, panda. You look happy like a panda. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, technically not they're I not meant, bears. I mean, you know, just that kind of, that light playfulness that pans. Oh, thank you, Darren. I appreciate that, too. <laughs> but technically they're not even bears. Oh, they aren't? Well. No, they're marsupials. Oh, wow. Well. Anyway, um, so if you need a creative, a creative jolt, uh, or if you're looking for, uh, you know, a request for a single idea or purpose. So, your last, your last shot for today is if you have a guide or a particular idea that you want to explore or, you know, a sub-personality of your own. Whatever it is, you're going to pick one card. One card. Um, formulating your question to that being. And that question, try and make it... Really simple, but make it meaningful to you. <coughs> so you could even say, okay, in this case, like I said, for me, it might be spirit of the bear, I'm in winter. What do I need to do to take care of myself? Okay, that would be one way of doing it. For your angels, you might if it's an angel for you, you might say, All right, what do I need to know, you know, to be in the most loving space in spite of Trump? Mm. Get that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So anyway, th those are just some of them. Okay, you all got that idea? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when you, when you do that and you get your card, I invite you to turn to any one of your neighbors, who that, or that might be, uh, even if you've worked with them already, and just share some of what you, who it was you were asking, what your question was, and what your impressions were. And see if you can get that out in like 60 seconds and then switch turns so the other person has a shot. And we can ask more than one being? So of course you can. Turn? Yes. Okay. Yes. In other words, you're, the point, the reason for this is you're not limited to Michael here. Mm -hmm. Michael's energy is built the ship and it built the vocabulary. But it makes it available to anyone to be invited in to utilize it. Make sense? Yep. Okay. So... Have at. just put it out, so I said, what I need to do to my business, so I'm going to be like, balance, because <laughs> so much. So, uh, let's see. Um, so if you had your impression, so, and you've, uh, maybe you've read it, and you've you read what I'm seeing from here, what came right away, you did. is that um, I'm, when you feel ready, you can start to share it with somebody. So, all about emotions and take care of everybody and everything so greatly that I forget about like, forget about my own and my own myself. So it feels like I need to be more, you know, more like um, not like cold, but just just uh, forget a little bit about emotions and take it more like fun. It's, it's easy. Kind of on the email situation I'm talking about, because I love my, what I teach, I love my job, but I hate the emails and all that stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, it seems very unbothered to my same here, and I take it too seriously, and I just need to make things more pragmatic. I got self Really yeah. like rock yeah. and, and kind of love, yeah, like yeah, to, talking to people and say how I feel, and say, okay, you know, I'm gonna 
have an uh, system and she tries to fight for me, you know, you guys have to take care of it. You have to understand, I cannot do it. So do what? Can I do everything? And then it's dreaming, and it actually doesn't work. So there is a way for you to be, to focus on being real. Which is part of the body mm-hmm. And know that when you you're real, you're in the So you've got the Saturn so. body type mm-hmm. card, um, yeah, it, which you definitely it, have. It also up, talks to me. Yeah. yeah, you have some Saturn yeah. system. Meaning, you know, it's not always solid. And he's been um, you know, if you, if you read what it says in the book, in your, it's about your body, being careful yeah, that you're not romanticizing. So, you know, when you're romanticizing, you're coming from a place of what you wish to be true, but is not true. So, yes, it's saying, to but it's like don't also, don't so sugarcoat this because it's not how it the moon is so compassionate what about you what do you call that two yes exactly I know it's fun yes indeed so let let me so we can we already extended our time by half an hour I'd like to keep the time agreement and just bring it to completion anything uh, that you any of you wanted to report um, that you found interesting surprising enjoyable painful pardon me about your question yes well I you know I did I put out my uh, intention and I, I really feel like I got a lot of answers today you know no matter what we were talking about it always kind of came back to that even when you said just pull a card and look at the book. It was another piece of the pie. So they just kept feeding me the answer, no matter what the question was. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Mm. Wonderful. Fabulous. It's nice, beautiful. I, I found yeah. that I was better. I, I really liked sort of like looking at other people's cards and just sort of like being with them. Even though at first I would feel kind of like, oh gosh, I don't know. But then it would just sort of I'd relax into it, and it would just kind of all fall into place, but I found this last one for myself that I have a tendency that the focus part is kind of like hard sometimes, so it's like, oh, I'll bring in this thing, oh no, I'll bring in that thing, oh, oh maybe I should do this, and, <laughs> and it's really, I find it, I, up to this point, I find it challenging to really zero in on one thing and just kind of like to be with that, to allow the energy to come through with that, so I found this a little challenging. I found it easier to focus on other people. You're talking about you're feeling good about your receptivity, embodying the feminine principle, and you need a little more focus or the masculine principle, right? To decide. Yes. Did you pull my cards? (laughs) (laughs) These were meant for you, blending your blending your receptivity and your focus together. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Very good. Wow. Anyone else? All right, so I hope that that was an interesting experience of of tasting how a different energy can use this vehicle and still connect. So in closing, ladies and gentlemen, two gentlemen, as it were, I just want to reiterate, you know, you, you you can't do this wrong. Really, there's nothing you can do wrong here. You can keep getting to, you know many variances, but every time you learn a little bit more deeply, you sharpen your intuition, you become more comfortable, you learn the nuances of those layers, every time the refinement improves itself. Every time. And just ultimately, the bottom line is, remember that idea of positive intent. You're coming to these readings to serve and to learn whether it's to serve yourself or to serve someone else. And with an intention like that, there's nothing that more you really have to do except hold that attention, that intention, and then pay attention, and then the magic works through you. And with that, I am complete. Thank you all for coming. Yay. 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 Yay.